after we have organized everything, the next step is to go to Premiere Pro CS6, click it, and start the program. Once the program loads up, what we're going to see is our first screen, which wants us to set up our project files. Now remember, we made a project file folder right over here. When we go to New Projects, the only thing that we really need to concern ourselves with is two things. First one is to browse and go to the file path. Our file path is going to be Desktop, Individual Assessment, Premiere Pro, Assessment Folder, Project Files. Then we can hit Choose. And here, I like to be a little redundant. 2015, January 17th, Assessment. Then we hit OK. Now remember, the codex here are going to be our digital SLR codec, but we don't know exactly what we shot at. It could it either be 1080p 24 frames per second or 1080p 30 frames per second. For this, I'm just going to pick 24 and name my sequence main movie. When I do this, I can go hit OK and it will actually launch me into the program. The first step in starting to manipulate my clips is going to File, Import, and here again my path is Desktop, Premiere Pro, Assessment, and I'm going to take in this whole folder called Video, Import, and it will import those files for me. And I'll have a folder in my bin with three nice movies. I'm going to go File Import again because I also need my audio. Take my audio folder, Import, and if you see this, it's just the audio folder fell inside of the video folder. <clears throat> so now I have my audio folder, my video folder, and my main movie sequence. What I'd like you guys to do is double click the establishing shot, start with the establishing shot. What you're going to see is it's black for a little while. I want you to take it from a portion that we hear the audio from this and I want you to set your in point by pressing I and your out point before we hear OK by pressing O and then left click and dragging that down into the timeline. We want to show a little bit of continuity here so here we have the typing going on. If I double click my next clip what we can see is that typewriter moving across the page. So I'm going to take it from about here hit I and hit O over here then again drag down and what I want to do is see how it kind of snaps into place I want those touching because that will make sure that there's no gap there. My third clip double click and there's a little bit of talking in the beginning so I want to take right where these start to move. My in and out, I and O, and bring down into our timeline. So now what we have is our clip that plays. It will switch to now, the second portion, and to our third clip now. Those are the three clips. Pretty easy, right? The last thing I want you guys to do, uh, well, not the last thing, but the next thing we want to do is look at our video transitions. I want you to use video transitions, dissolve, dip to black in between both clips. So we do that by taking left click, left click and dragging over, and now we have a couple of fade to blacks between our clips. Okay. 
Now we heard a, a little bit of audio from that one. We're not going to actually use this audio. We're going to mute this track by going to audio track one and clicking toggle track output. By deselecting this, you won't hear any audio. That's because we have an audio track here and it's just typewriter audio. We can actually just take that and drag it right down into our track two. Now notice that it plays but it's it's going to stop right here. We can just simply take it again and it's going to do a little loop and now we have that looping. The last thing I want you to do is add a title and we're going to do a default still. So we go to title, new title, default still. And we're going to say the name of it is the end. It's going to automatically give us the resolution that we're working in. So we're going to hit OK and that will bring up the title dialog box. <coughs> Here, I like to go from left click and drag into the what we call title safe window. After we do that, it's going to give us some text prompt, and here I'm going to put in the capitals, the end. I'm going to highlight all that, hit center, and then go to the beginning of it, and press enter a couple of times, and that will give us the centered, the end, nicely here. Size, we can bring up our size to 160 or around there, 159, I'm not going to be too picky on that. And the last thing I want you to do is scroll down through all these properties and click background. That's going to give us a nice black background. Remember it automatically saves so we can just exit out of this window. And now we have over here a title that works just like our video. So we're going to drag that to video track one and now it will cut to the end. So now we have a nice little video. Three clips with transitions and some titles to go with it. If you want to go above and beyond we can take this, shorten it up, and add a dip to black here. And if you're feeling really fancy, what we can do is add an audio transition and an exponential fade at the end. That's not required, but the next step is. Once we're all done with doing this, now we have to export it. To export, we click down into our sequence. Remember, we don't want to click a clip because that will export just a clip. We're going to press the gray here, go to File, Export, Media. We're going to concern ourselves with uh, a couple of things here. First, we've got to make sure that it plays all the way to the end. So sometimes it will just try to export a portion. Once we see that it actually coincides with the end of our film, we can give it the green light to change some of the export settings. The settings that we use for this class are format, H.264 as the codec. And what's nice about Premiere is it gives a, a lot of preset settings for export. We're going to scroll all the way down and go to YouTube HD 23.976, which is also 24 frames per second. And then the last thing we do is click the output name and assign it to where we're going to save it. Here, again, desktop, individual assessment Premiere Pro, the assessment folder, and finished videos. Once we hit save, we're all set to export. We hit export, and we're done. So I expect all of these steps to be accomplished in the individual assessment. Again, no pressure. If you miss one, it's not the end of the world, but please use this video to freshen up on all of the steps that we've covered in class and 
good luck. If you have any questions, you can always email me or you can always come and talk to me. I'm always here. So good luck, guys. Look forward to it.